Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth and today I am bringing you the Naked Booktube tag. The original is by Let's Book About It. I will leave a link to her video down below. So let's give you the rules before we get started. Number one, she wants you to be naked. No, not really. She wants your face to be naked. No makeup. So I typically do about half the videos I do a week are sans makeup anyway, so no big deal. But there you have it. If you would like to go without makeup, that's a good way to start. Number two, we are not editing this video. That means you cannot take out, um, uh, the uh, I don't, uh, eh, which is going to be a problem. And I'm sorry that the video is going to be as long as it is. All right. There are six questions. So let's hop into it. Number one, when you take the jacket off of a book, it becomes naked. When is the last time you stripped a book? What was the last book you stripped? So I don't often strip my hardcovers, mainly because I tend to purchase hardcovers that are either pretty naked hardcovers or I get them from the library or purchase them in library binding. And so they are all taped up. Um, but I did get this Wonderland uh, coloring book inspired by Alice's Adventures by Amy Shin. And it is one of those that has the heavy duty uh, cover. And then it has a dust jacket that folds out to become a poster that you color. So I have taken that off recently. I have not started coloring anything in here, but there's that. And we'll be coloring it soon. Don't worry. Number two, name the steamiest love scene in a book that you've read. Name the book. Don't talk about the love scene. Um, basically, I'm sure that I've read something steamier, possibly, um, but this kind of takes the cake. I remember this one, so Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, and I feel like this is going to be pretty much everyone who's read it, um, this is going to be their answer to that question, but there you go. Jamie and Claire are definitely, definitely steamy. All right. The next is number three, let's play Date, Mary Kill using book characters. So I got to choose three book characters and say who I would date, who I would marry, and who I would kill. First of all, I would date Ronan Lynch, but it probably wouldn't work out because, well, we all know why it probably wouldn't work out. If you've read this book and if you haven't read the book, I'm not going to spoil it for you. However, as soon as he's not gel bait, he's mine, and I could maybe make it work. I don't know, but I would love to date Ronan. Um, I think he would be a good boyfriend, even though he's got some anger issues. I think that he would probably uh, be a fabulous, fabulous boyfriend. And I have my reasons for that. Number two, who would I marry? Duh. I would marry Fitzwilliam Darcy, either in the original or more likely the updated version that we get from the Lizzie Bennet Diaries, which is why I chose to show you this gorgeous Lizzie Bennet Diaries edition. Um, I love the way that they kept him true to himself, but in an updated manner for the 21st century. So he is definitely, definitely someone I would marry. He's top of my fictional character Mary list, which is pretty amazing, I have to say, because the next one down is uh, George Weasley, or Fred Weasley, but, you know, at the end of the seventh book, I had to change my mind a little bit. It took me a while. And moving on, who would I kill? This is going to be a little unpopular, but it's okay. Just look at how pretty the cover on this edition of King Arthur and His Knights is, and you can kind of ignore it if you don't like it, but I would kill Sir Lancelot. He screwed everything up. He's a horrible friend. Yeah, he went on some great conquests and helped Arthur and whatever, and then he, you know, ruined Camelot, and he wasn't even supposed to be the one that went to be at Arthur's side. So there's that, and I'm getting angry, and I'm going to... I'm going to put this down now. Yes. We had some wonderful debates over King Arthur in both mythology class and my um, 
what was it? Early English Lit, maybe? I don't remember what it was called, but basically we read a bunch of the old English classic mythologies and uh, books, the stories that were written. Anyway, so yeah, I would kill Lancelot. Number four, A Little Naked Truth Now. Which booktuber are you the most envious of, wish you could be the most like, and why? Um, probably the ones that have a whole bunch of followers, not because I need a whole bunch of subscribers, but because they're the ones that seem super confident and they're just very out there and they've been here a while. They've built everything up. They know how to edit really easily. They can get that stuff taken care of. They are comfortable in front of the camera so they can enunciate and portray their feelings and thoughts on the matter without going insane. Um, I often forget exact words and I have to kind of switch it around and then later I'll be laying in bed and be like, oh, I meant to say this. I didn't put that in that video and I'm mad at myself now because I've already edited and uploaded and it's done now. But so yeah, definitely the people who feel comfortable. And there are a lot who don't have as many subscribers, but who are also in that category because they're just so good at editing and they seem so comfortable in front of the camera. And I promise I'm trying to get there. I really am. And now moving on. Number five, since we're letting it all hang out, what bookmark is wedged between your pages? I've got three right now. So we have this magnetic bookmark in my So You Want to Be a Wizard, which I restarted, um, started rereading, and then got distracted by other books. I like to bend out the bottom and kind of set it down, and it will stand up. You can't see that, but it's standing up. And then when I'm ready to close my book, I can go just kind of slide it in and do like that. Next is Wired for Story. It actually has the bookmark that came with it and it says, I tell stories. That was from the story box, which is no longer um, a thing. And then finally in Unhooked, I have a birthday card from February that was sitting in my bedside table and yeah. So number six, final question. How many times do you think you would have edited this video if you went back and took out words and phrases, etc.? Um, probably seven or eight times, but I don't want to talk about that either. So I'm just going to say goodbye and let these gorgeous naked hardbacks speak for themselves. This is Edgar Allan Poe Complete Works. It is a Borders classic from 2004, and you can tell I've read it a time or two because it's got scratches along the gilt edges, but I love it. The other one is from 1971. It is Famous Fairy Tales, and I'm not sure where I got it from, but somebody bought a two-pound can of Folgers and got it for free, so that is pretty fabulous. I wish we still did things like that. I buy Folgers all the time, and I would definitely buy a two-pound thing of Folgers if it meant that I could get a nice hardback book for myself or for my daughter because this thing was in 71 and um, I have had to take the spine a little bit but it's not bad at all really. This is the biggest issue in the book. A little bit of tape will fix that up for a while so yeah. Gorgeous naked hardbacks. Great tag. I'll do all the links down below and I will see you guys later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're new. Bye!